The day has come! The day has come. We are finally back. Yay! Um, so today, uh, as the title obviously suggests, we bring uh, one of our a great deal of many Sultan Pasha atars that we have uh, that we are seeking to review for you. And uh, even more crazy is that this is one we're going to be opening here on camera. We have the, the bottle is still sealed. Uh, so we'll show you everything that comes with uh, a Owning a Pasha. Of Sultan Pasha, yeah. yeah. The first fragrance we have, the fragrance of, that's the topic of this review is Am Sombre. You can see it perhaps etched uh, or written on the glass, the glass yeah. there by Sultan Pasha. I hope that shows up. So the way that your uh, bottle comes, the name is written on the glass. It, it kind of looks like so. And uh, you can see there's the dipstick inside. You have the wax seal on the top. That's SP Sultan Pasha. Or Sultan Pasha. And it comes with some masking tape wrapped around the top. That's that's what you unwrap in order to get to your precious juice below. You rip in such a way as to... Try to preserve the wax. Try to preserve the wax seal on top. There you go. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's enough. It is torn around the base of the cap enough. There's a little metal wire that has attached the cap to the, cap to the base. So That's kind of nice, though. So if you're worried about uh, how your Sultan Pasha is going to... Uh, hold up during its travel to get to you, worry not. So you can securely remove the cap, it'll look something like this, and this is now your... the way your fragrance appears. So then, uh, like you would for uh, any number of attar oils or uh, oud oils, really any type of uh, perfume that's based in oil, there you go, you pull that guy out and you apply it with uh, your little dipstick here. So that is a Sultan Pasha un unwrapping, if Woo! you will. So now we have the fragrance, uh, Am Sombre. It means dark soul in French. That's it? Yeah. Oh. It means well, dark sombre soul. Sombre means, yeah, somber. Yeah, somber. So somber soul. Somber soul. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. My French isn't that distinct. Also, as you can tell, I haven't put my nose to this at all, and I can already smell what this, uh, yeah. what it's going from. Opening the, opening the oil will, will do that. Yep. You're, you're, you're opening a world to the, to the fragrance at hand. Something to note to people who are new to Atar oils, this, it's not going to stain your skin, but, like, you'll have, like, a residual color on your skin when you wear it, because it's not like it's a, it's an alcohol base, so just be prepared when you do wear it that you might get a little spot, depending on your skin color. And to, based on what, what oil you order, uh, some of them are are thicker in, in consistency than others. You can see here, uh, Am Sombre isn't, isn't super thick, mm -hmm. but it's already thicker than uh, a traditional perfume would be. You can see the oil kind of uh, has a little bit of syrupiness to it. Um, so if you're not used to, if you're not used to them, that's, that's a good point. Um, after smelling all the samples, there's kind of like a signature of Pasha that you can just point out when you wear like a Sultan Pasha, if that makes sense. Um, kind of very similar to some of the Guerlain's, that there's like a Guerlain-esque. Yeah, Guerlainade. What? Uh, Guerlainade is what it's called, or Guerlainade. It's a signature set of notes that like hold together the, the, the base of huh. the fragrance. But anyway, like you can, after wearing uh, 30 some samples, <laughs> I don't even have to know anymore if it's a Pasha, I just like, will smell it and be like, oh yep, that's Sultan Pasha, I can just already tell already. Um, so that's kind of fun, like it's a, a signature in that sort of way, I guess would be a, a way to describe it. Well, it's also one of those things, I think in stating that, that there is like a, a specific smell that goes along with them. I think he does for sure consistently utilize a lot of uh, specific notes uh, Oud. in the in the fragrances. <laughs> um, I'm thinking specifically for Sultan. Uh, you you a lot of times see ambergris, sandalwood, uh, and gardenia appear a lot. Those are those are three uh, notes that he uses on a on a very consistent Regular, basis. Yeah. yeah, there is a difference in getting used to uh, attar oils than there is getting used to. Uh, alcohol-based perfume. If you're used to alcohol-based perfume, um, you're probably going to have to wear through uh, attar oils first to kind of get used to it. It's it's kind of like the difference between drinking 
uh, like a wine and a whiskey. If you are well versed in in wine, that doesn't necessarily denote that the the, that the, the wine, knowledge base yeah. that you you have is going to transfer to drinking whiskey. Now that being said, uh, I I don't think the difference is as huge as it is from win wine to whiskey, but it's something to note if you are mm -hmm. if you're looking to get into it at first. Um, apply gently. Apply gently <laughs> and spend spend a lot of time uh, working your way through the notes. Maybe a lot of time thinking about. Uh, the way that the composition is affecting you, and don't expect it to function like an alcohol-based perfume because it won't. And it lasts forever. Yeah, Sultan Pasha's attars last uh, all day. Even if you apply the smallest, like pinprick amount, uh, it'll last you all day. And, and sometimes uh, when we go to bed and wake up the next morning, they're still a little bit hanging out. They're still going. It's definitely more of a, a slower, uh, gradual change from, from top to mid to, to base notes than it is for even a lot of, uh, like, a lot of heavier perfumes. That being said, there is a lot of transformation that takes place. Mm -hmm. So again, I would, I would be, when you're first time through here, I would be paying a lot of particular attention to that. Maybe um, wear this on a weekend. <laughs> With, or like whenever you don't work, right? So that way you can proactively s sniff it versus yeah. be at work and just... And miss it. Or that or just look like a weirdo constantly smelling your <laughs> your elbow pit or wherever it is you plot, apply your fragrance. Now we've kind of generally touched on attar oils and, and on Sultan Pasha specifically, but what does uh, Ensemble uh, smell like? So... Um, to me, there's a lot of dichotomy going on in this fragrance itself. It changes a lot uh, over time. There's there's a really rich rose that's in the center of this composition. Up top and all the way through the base, there's consistently very, very dark, very chewy, very smoky qualities that are at play. And you kind of come to determine a lot of ulterior aspects coming into the edge of the fragrance. So you'll get a lot of sweetness at some points, which seems to me to be coming from the benzoin that's at play here, but it might also be a little bit of the natural sweetness that's coming out of the tobacco, because mm -hmm. there's loads of tobacco in here. If, if I were to refer to this in any way, I would say there's, there's three crazy things that uh, display themselves in varied ways throughout here. You're getting rose, you're getting tobacco, and you're for sure getting frankincense. This thing is a frankincense monster. I don't smell any rose. Oh, it's for sure there, though. But I think I've always struggled really with rose as a note in general, so I don't smell it, but I smell most likely what I think is tobacco as well as incense. Which yeah. goes with my dark, heavy and heavy <laughs> uh, fragrance. I don't know. I mean, I think this is a very gentlemanly, classy fragrance, in my opinion. Mm. What do you think? You don't think so? It's incredibly musky to me. Really? Um, and it's incredibly, despite how lightly colored the juice is for, compare or in comparison to a lot of the other Sultan Pashas, I feel like this has a lot of darkness to it, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um... I think the tobacco helps lift up uh, a lot of a lot of the darker notes that that start to play in here, um, and I think the frankincense has a lot of sweetness kind of at the edges to it. It's like kind of like a burnt sugar type deal because you get a lot of the smoke and you get a lot of the kind of uh, that's a really good way to describe it. Yeah, more earthy mm -hmm. aspects to uh, to the frankincense, but you do catch like an occasional pop of sweetness that comes out of the frankincense. Maybe like a caramely type, like where caramel's sweet, but it's not like sugar sweet, yeah. it's just a, a heavier sweetness. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the animalic notes here also add to that kind of chewy effect that I'm talking about. Um, like chew as in tobacco? Chewy? No, it's uh, it's a hard to describe effect. It's um, It might be you're, you're talking about uh, the consistency of the fragrance and just how thick it feels, but it okay. really feels like the high racks plays into it a lot, I feel like. Uh, definitely joined in with the tobacco. Occasionally you get uh, what just feels kind of like dark brown fur going on. It is always playing at the edge with something kind of edible in here. It always almost becomes gourmandy to me. You think so? Yeah, it's like steamy qualities about it. it. It feels like it's very hot at the same time. Which like probably underneath. could be the incense. You know, just thinking about incense is usually burned. Yeah. Like, tobacco is also burned. Yeah. And I mean, there's the benzoin in here also adds this really warm quality to the overall effect of the fragrance. Benzoin has this weird way of 
um, kind of like inverting vanilla qualities that you're used to. It kind of has that still kind of creamy, rich, um, semi-sweet uh, affair to it, but instead benzoin kind of, instead of being like, a, like an arid waft, it kind of bubbles over and becomes this warm heat uh, that carries with it kind of a semi-thick atmosphere since heat does tend to feel thicker. That's kind of the way it comes across to you as well rather than vanilla which kind of smells just more like a spice that's floating throughout the air that can be uh, pleasant even on summer days. Benzoin feels more like um, a warm thick substance at the base of this fragrance that's kind of boosting the rest of it kind of up a little bit. Okay. So from the tobacco there's also like a really old aged patchouli in here too and both of those as well as kind of some of the other notes in here add a little bit of like a dirty earthy quality underneath Definitely it all. Definitely a dirty earthy. And so that paired with kind of the the rich smoke on the top layer and the dirty earth underneath and then some of those other notes like the rose in between and the mm -hmm. benzoin kind of uh, add this really thick multifaceted set of smells. Smells, yeah, walls of of notes that kind of hit you in different uh in different ways throughout the day that it really really interesting and really beautiful the way that the way that Sultan Pasha pulls them off. Mm -hmm. So there's also a leathery labdanum at the base that really just comes across with a really strong, rich, semi-herbal feel to it, which kind of contrasts itself from Cade. So a lot of times in traditional perfume, you're going to be smelling Cade as the note that brings forth the effect of leather. Mm -hmm. um, but Cade often comes across, to me at least, a little more peppery, a little more... Um, spicy, uh, whereas kind of the, the leathery effect that you get from the labdanum here seems to be pairing up with kind of the ambergris underneath and uh, a little bit more of the resins that are buried in there to kind of make it uh, more opulent and just kind of like dark accord that takes up the base uh, of this fragrance along with some of the other base notes. And as you get used to the frankincense that's there and the tobacco that's there, once you get used to the juicy rose that's that's kind of buried underneath and all the effects that they're kind of prismatically ping-ponging off each other, you, you get to see what the leather is doing under underneath the, the labdanum there and you get to kind of feel this effect more than like a direct uh, smoky tanned leather. Uh, you get the effect of leather kind of buried underneath with all of these uh, really rich and sweet and spicy uh, and rare uh, resins that are just kind of piled on top of this leather here. It feels not just because of the frankincense, but because of the opulence of everything. It feels at times to me like a church that you're in. Okay, <clears throat> an old church. Like a, Yeah, like an old church with a table set about with all of these really precious ingredients just mm -hmm. kind of sat there. There's animal in hides. The dark. In the dark. With, with candles. Yeah, with candles and smoke, yeah, yeah. Kind of rising. No natural, or no, like, artificial light. It's either candles or real light. Or real light, yeah, That's piercing it. through. And it's very, it's very minimal. You get just, I mean, traditionally, when you're doing liturgy, you've, you've got the little, that, uh, thing. the little ball swinging back and forth that the incense is rising through. That's supposed to be the symbol of... Uh, the prayers of the saints rising to the heavens and when when i smell this that's what the exactly what the frankincense does here he uses a similar frankincense in a few of his other fragrances and every time it's i wouldn't call it a churchy a churchy in uh, like frankincense but there is something about it that just to my mind immediately like calls to something holy and the 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 interesting fact about the that holy quality being paired on top of these all really dark and uh mysterious and kind of uh, more animalic, occasionally more sexual fragrance notes underneath is really just compelling to me. And every time I wear this fragrance, that's kind of where I go is that yeah. there's a for sure dark element to this that's just, it's not dark in the like sadistic, serial killer, uh, murky, evil quality, but dark as in that. Zorro! <laughs> well, dark as in like. When, you know, in Lord of the Rings, yeah, you meet, like, Ryder or Strider, and he's not, he's not an anti-hero, he's the greatest hero in the, in the film, uh, in some respects, but he has, like, a shade of darkness that also makes him more badass, and so when I talk about, like, the darkness here, it feels more like a, like a badass or depth, like a, yeah, like a, like a difficult to penetrate depth that you see there. Okay. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. When you encounter when you encounter people that you would be like, wow, they're, they're a little bit dark. It's like, wow, they've got a history, a storied history. They've okay. got depth to them. Their character is really immense and then yes, I guess almost ir imser. When we meet Strider, that's a a good a good place to start. Yeah, and when you, I mean, if you smelled someone like this, that's what you would think too, right? Would you wouldn't be, yeah. you wouldn't be like, oh, that's easy to understand. They're a pleasant like 
person to just pop in and you could just talk about bubblegum bullshit. You could be like shooting, talking about the weather and whatever with them. No, I mean, their first question would probably be, tell me about your mother. <laughs> so bottle design. What do you think about the bottles here? I love the wax. That's the wax. what sells me. Yeah. I mean... The handwritten title on the side. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I guess for something, it's hard because you only get so much that there's no reason to have a crazy bottle. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the room to make a crazy bottle. The wax makes it seem classy, you know, especially like how beautiful the writing is that helps too. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what else I'd want from a bottle like this, um, but I feel like it's missing something in my opinion. It's missing something. Yeah. I mean, the, so the bottle itself is like an incredibly traditional uh, bottle for Atar oils. You can see even in like the, the distilled uh, ouds that are kind of... Uh, on the market right now, that's pretty much the bottle that they come in. It's mm -hmm. a similar bottle. Uh, Salt and Pasha's tops definitely make it different. The writing on the side definitely makes it unique. Usually they have like some traditional, uh, like consistently uh, symmetrical, like design etched into the yep. sides. And here I'm appreciative that he doesn't do something hokey like that. I feel like that would be a little kitsch. I re yeah, I really like the writing on the side here. And I, I don't know, there's something about the bottle itself that to me feels like alchemical, that feels something like uh, mysterious. You don't really know what it is that you're dealing with here. Okay, that's fair. That might be because I'm not like from the Middle East and I don't encounter these bottles on, on a yeah. daily basis. But I feel like the wax seal, the tape almost looks like a cloth uh, in some Definitely. respects. Definitely. If, if, if you didn't know it was masking tape, you would think it was. Yeah, and the, and just the handwritten the handwritten title on the, on the side of it and everything is just, oh boy. Well, you you, are, you saw before. It's just it's just amazing and how thick the oil is. Something about it feels very very like austere and mysterious to me. And alchemical is the first thing that I like think of when I yeah. see it. I'm like, oh man, some wizard's pulling out his cupboard of of mystical potions. Mystical potions. You know, here, take a sip. Yeah, here, take a sip of this. Good um, luck storming the castle. <laughs> That's why I feel like, I mean, I feel like the bottle's super traditional, but has its own unique little twists on it. Yeah. I think, like Jess said, there's not really much else you could do with it, unless you go with something like, uh, I see all the time on some of these Facebook groups I'm in, they're selling like uh, $300 for a bottle that looks like a flower, and it's like a hand-designed, like, Lalique oh. style bottle that's been etched, and they've got a little, like, area that you can fill your attire oil in, and you, oh, that's cool. it, and you, you apply it. I feel like that would be uh, much, absolutely stupid for this that's <laughs> type fair. of fragrance. But yeah, I feel like I feel like this is kind of like the the classic like Serge Laton style bottle. You know, yep. Serge Laton just got the uniform deal. It works out perfectly for his shit. Yep. And I feel like the same is is probably true here for Salt for these. Yeah. Perfect. What do you feel about the 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 fragrance inside? I like it. Not like a winner winner chicken dinner for me, <laughs> um, but I do enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's also hard because I'm even though it's not warm outside. I'm getting ready for spring, and this doesn't feel like spring to me, so it might be the season. It's that pulling you back it's under. It's pulling me back, and I'm just like, <laughs> eh, you know, I want something happier. <laughs> not something so dark. But I think, I think the notes in it are things that I enjoy. I think I will really like this and be glad that we have it come fall, winter. It'll yeah. be fun. In terms of a tobacco fragrance, in terms of uh, like a frankincense fragrance, uh, the only other fragrances that, that rate this high on my list are other Sultan Pashas. Um, <laughs> and I think this one really just hits hits the nail on the head. I think it's one of the greatest dark scents that I've ever smelled in my life. And I think it really does pair incredibly well these this like trinity of like holy and then like animalic slash like sexual and then like like dark and mysterious. And I think that enough would be like if someone wrote a review and actually hit those those points home and and yeah. made me cognizant of what was going on in this fragrance i wouldn't even need to smell it i could buy it i think it's amazing and in terms of like longevity and in terms of uh like projection it projects ready, pretty well yeah get ready for all day you know 12 hours you know yep two miles away <laughs> <laughs> i can tell when he's coming home as soon as yeah. he gets off of the exit, I can smell him coming. The cats are at the door, you know, noses are wiggling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who is it? Yeah. Yeah. So who who would you see wearing this? See, I'm still going with my gentlemanly type. Mark Antony. Okay. Why would Mark Antony be this guy? Because I just think, like, this would be something that somebody, not necessarily from the Middle East, 
we find kind of easily approachable. And I think it'd be easily a gift Cleopatra would give to her lover. It would be like, here you go, honey. <laughs> a fancy fragrance. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. You know what? I, I like it. I get the, the powerful, distinguished man's man, but not... Not really. I don't know. Rugged. I mean, there you go. For sure, yeah. Uh, like a bearded fellow with a big chest and lots of hair sprouting out underneath his his collar. Yes. So Mark Antony, perfect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sums it up pretty well. So I guess it's not a fictional. I mean, there are fictional interpretations of Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Yeah. So I guess it counts. Um, it counts. But uh, that's kind of who I I picture. Something about this feels kind of like ruby-ish to me uh, again because it's the kind of it's the kind of opulent, but yet dark. If you look at a ruby, it's it's got like mm -hmm. it goes dark when you when you shift it around to its deepest point. It's mm -hmm. kind of blackish. You don't really see the red anymore, um, and it's kind of juicy like a ruby would be. There's some like there's some kind of semi sweet quality, but again, the burnt like you know smoky dark under under effect. So I think of like I think of yeah opulent, rich, sexy, masculine. Uh, but at the same time, kind of holy character. I think, I Batman. think Aragorn, well, Batman could be a good one. Yeah, Batman certainly could be right, a good rich, one. you know. Yeah, ma masculine is yeah. all hell, yeah. I mean, uh, you're right, Aragorn, I think. He but fits I, it well, though, because. I don't think he'd wear it once he's actually, like, Aragorn, though. Maybe the Strider personality of him, but not the. But not the King Aragorn? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can agree with that. Because that one is too happy. Not happy, but just... There's something... There's This is this is a little more... Uh, Somber, I guess. This is like the single man Aragorn. <laughs> single man Aragorn. Hasn't, hasn't met his, uh, his, his wife yet. Well, I mean, he's met her. I mean, I think Batman's a pretty good one. Um, I think Superman's probably even better if you look at like newer, darker interpretations oh, okay. of Superman. Sorry, I always go to like Christopher Reeves. Yeah, a dorky of, Superman. Of Superman, and that's my version. Not well, because here's the thing. Again, it's got to be one of these figures. I think that's why Superman fits better. That has like an aspect of holiness to them. Yeah. Um, but there's again, there's there's depth. So it's like a tragic hero. Yep, he lost who winds his hometown. He lost, or lost his home, like his home planet, yeah. and everybody, and everything. Yeah, so if you think of like if you think of like dark interpretations of Superman, this could perhaps certainly so be Zachary him. Snyder. I don't know. I've never seen that movie. I think so. it is. It is Zachary Snyder for sure, but I've never seen the movie, so I have no idea. Well, that's what we got. So be prepared for our other nine Sultan Pasha fragrances that we yeah. uh, will have coming your way as far as the full bottle reviews. And we also got other fun things coming in the mail. We've got other fun things coming in the mail. We've got tons of new reviews. We we're looking forward to doing. And but we got that cat. As and far as the Sultan Pashas, we have we have another nine bottles uh, or another eight bottles that we're looking to looking to review, and uh, we'll be we'll be looking at, looking forward to talking with you real soon with all these new crazy ventures. We're back.